I think it's probably 10 o'clock at night. That's what I think it is. 10 o'clock at night, you all. If I'm correct, I don't know what time it is for you all, you all. But I am in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the woods in Tennessee. Um, my husband said, guess what? We're going on a trip. <laughs> That's what he said this morning, and uh, we did. We're in Tennessee. You can see I'm not in my home. I'm not. Hello there, Apple Brooks. I'm uh, actually, I, I'm going to sleep in this room tonight because this room has a desk. So that's where I'm at. I'm in Tennessee, you all. And we're going to talk about these giants, these ancient, these giants of ancient Tennessee. Can you all hear me? Hello there, Michelle. That's why I haven't been on here, you all. Uh, I had to connect to the Wi-Fi here. Um, Arg. Hello there, Susan B. Honey. So I am late on here. So I am going to be gone for a couple of days. Come back on Thursday. Um, that's right, you all. I tell you what, it was an adventure. <laughs> um, it, the one good thing it has, it has an excellent view of the western sky with a deck out front. So when that sun sets, it's high on a mountain peak. This is, um, I have no idea where we're at. I never know where we're going. I don't know the name of the cities or nothing like that. Um, I know that we'll probably go to Cumberland State Park. If, if it, that's, it, we're around that area somewhere. Um, but yeah, it has a good, a good view of the western sky. And I thought, you know what? I'd love to get a good camera. I brought my tripod, but the sky was all blah. So we're going to look at those giants, you all. You were just watching your Naga and the reptilian video galaxy. That's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful, you all. I'm not at home, so this is where I'm at. I'm up here. I'm, I've got this room up here at this top part. When I say we're in the middle of the woods, we came, this driveway, it just takes you back curves and curves and curves. I've told my husband, you got to drive slow because the road gets skinnier and skinnier. And one of the roads we turned on, there was a hearse that was turned on the same road. And I said, what is that hearse doing, you all? Uh, <laughs> and when it came for our turn, that's the same place that hearse turned. Somebody driving a hearse at around 6.30 at night or something like that. And then I said, well, I hope it doesn't turn on the road that we're going on. And it turned on that road, too. And then I said, I hope it doesn't go on the driveway road where it turns into gravel. I said, because if it does, if that hearse, you all, it was dark. It was getting dark. I said, if that hearse goes up that driveway up into the hills where this is at, I said, to where we're at, I said, don't you dare follow it. He goes, well, what am I supposed to do? Because <laughs> there's nowhere to turn around. I said, don't follow it. I said, don't go up there because it's got a, <laughs> it's a hearse. I said, they're probably going to, they're probably going to kill us and throw us in the back of it, you all. That's what I thought because it was really eerie. It was in front of us and every road that we had to turn on, that hearse was following. It, I mean, it was going, leading the way. And I did, you all. When you have a cabin, it's a cabin out in the middle of the woods, way up on a mountain peak. And there's, there's no lights. There's no nothing. Um, I, I got internet, but still, you all, there's no outdoor lights where we're at. And that's what I thought. If, if he goes up in that driveway, we're not getting out of a vehicle. We're not. Oh, my gosh. But he turned. Uh, I guess they live somewhere down the road, you all. That was, it was scary. It was kind of scary, but we made it here. That's right. That's right, you all. So the Giants of Tennessee. <laughs> uh, I wanted to bring my big computer so I'd have my OBS studio, but I don't got it with me. I don't. Now, Michelle, honey, your, your, your mama's having a hot flash. Got to take this back up. I'm having a hot flash talking about that hearse here in Tennessee. I am in the mountains, but then guess what? There are... Uh, giants of ancient Tennessee. Yeah, 
that it, 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 I didn't want to take this turn. I, I really was thinking, I said, let's just throw our bodies in the back of it and nobody would know it. That's right, you all. Oh my goodness gracious, yeah. That's all right, you all. So, um, boom. You, if you make another derogatory comment, puppy, that's just for joking. If you make another comment, boom, God. That's right, you all. So let's look at this. So the giants, let me, let me, let me lighten this up. The giants of ancient Tennessee. Um, and I won't be able to put the references in. Well, I probably could. I could probably log on here and do it. So um, I clicked into that, you all. We can click into it right here. Look at this. The um, giants of ancient Tennessee. Now this is on uh, July the 7th, you all. Is what it is. Hello there in Oregon. Um, wouldn't it be cool if a giant saved you? Oh, that would be wonderful, Susan Donahue. It sure would. That's right. Can you all hear me? Is my volume not turned up? Let me see if I can turn this volume up on here. Um, I'm trying to find it. I don't even... That's why you can't hear me. Uh, I left the volume thing stuck on this coat. That's why. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah. So, um... I'll fix it. I, I'm glad somebody said something because I didn't know about it. And I didn't. Oh, wow. I hope I wasn't talking like that too long. Oh, okay. Okay, now how we feel now? We Are we better? It went muffled because um, it got, I took my coat off you all. I did. That's right. I, do, I don't normally use this, but I thought I want to make sure I have a good connection. All right, that's perfect, you all. It's all good. What happened to my troll that I deleted? Is he being, is he behaving? Hopefully he is. Yeah. So that's great. So the Giants of Tennessee. You all, let me do this for a second. Let me, I feel tangled up in this cord. I got to undo this cord because um, I got it bunched up. Um, I do. I want a great big long cord. Um, you thinking, Gina, what are you doing, you all? Ah, that's wonderful, Michelle, honey. We know we got some good moderators. We do. We got good moderators. Okay, we got it. How do I know about the Giants of Tennessee? Yikes. Okay, so we got this. John Hayward. Didn't we, didn't we read about him before, earlier? Um, was a historian known as the father of Tennessee history. These days, he might be best known for documenting giant skeletons found in Tennessee and popularizing, popularizing Tennessee, Tennessee pygmies? Tennessee pygmies? I didn't know Tennessee had pygmies, you all. Let's, can we link into that? Um, I'm thinking little people, maybe. Let's see. Um, a, the pygmy tribe in ancient Tennessee. Um, yes, there, there were giants that roamed the land back in biblical times. It does reference it. I'm trying to get my screen to move up. Okay, so there's a mound. There's hills all over Tennessee, you all. It's like rolling hills in certain areas. And I'm, as we were driving through, we was looking at those, and I thought, you know what? What if there were big, gigantic giant giants? I like to sit on the edge of my seat. I really do. What if there was really great big giant giants buried in those great big, great big hills? Okay, what if there was? It's standing on the shoulders. You all, let me do this. Let me stretch this so I want to have room. So, let me, let me, um, I'm going to put my one cord, leap it across this table. So, um, the Tennessee pygmies have held a prominent position in what skeptics like to call archaeological folklore since the 1820s due to the discovery of an enormous amount of skeleton remains of small statured people <gasps> throughout the <gasps> Cumberland Plateau region. That's where I'm at. I am at that because I'm going to probably go to that Cumberland Park or something. Small statured people throughout the region of Tennessee and Kentucky. It was once widely believed that a tribe of pygmies inhabited the area in the prehistoric past. What if they were like, um, oh, hobbits? What if they were hobbits? 
like Froto. Oh, you can't hear it, you all. As soon as I said that, you all, as soon as I said that, there's no lights. The wind is blowing really hard as soon as I said that. It is. Um, and there's no lights to look out there. It's in pitch black. <laughs> it is. Okay. Pygmies of Tennessee. Uh, what if they were like the Hobbits? So earlier... They wrote a blog about this issue. The article included a news purple, newspaper, the pygmy bones from Tennessee shipped, <gasps> shipped to the Smithsonian. That was December the 28th of 1875, the reading times. The readers warmly received the article with several folks reaching out to encourage me to write follow-up pieces. So this week I am doing just that with plans for another article or two to follow. So it, it, of course people want to know what's going on you all. They really do want to know what's going on with the history of the United States uh, and here in Tennessee. Look at this. Oh, wow. Let's look at this, you all. Um, so on the farm of Turner Lane ESQ, five miles southeast of Sparta, on the waters of the Caney Fork of Cumberland and on other farms adjacent have lately been found small graves sunk into the earth from one foot to 18 inches below the surface. They are about 10 inches broad and 18 inches long, having a flag limestone rock at each of the ends and sides and covered with the same species of rock. I've never heard rocks uh, described as a species of rock. I haven't. In these graves, are found skull bones about three inches in diameter, nearly um, sound, the other bones being proportionately small between two and three hundred of these graves have been discovered, you all. So we're reading this thing from denvermichaels.net about the pygmies now of Tennessee. We were talking about the ancient giants, but he had wrote something about the pygmies and we clicked into it. Yes, the hobbits or trolls. So, um, so um, the small grave, there's around 300 of these uh, graves have been discovered. In every tomb, yet opened, found a small black earthen pot, about one pint in capacity, <gasps> containing a small um, conch shell under undecayed, I don't know what a conch, conch shell is, you all. Do you know what a conch shell is? Maybe a seashell? Undeclayed of a gray color on the exterior and red within, and as transparent as this species of a shell is usually found, the pot, when broken, exhibits numerous white specks of shining, round, shining particles. Oh, it's a seashell? So... Uh, at Mr. Anderson's two miles and a half, half in southwesterly direction from the farm of Miss Lane were found other skeletons of the same dimension. In tombs constructed upon the same plan and of similar materials, you all were reading about these pygmies in Tennessee, ancient tribe of pygmies. Uh, at least it is said that it was observed to have teeth and all the bones belonging to the human body. How could that be? Really, ask yourself, how could that be? How could there be pygmies uh, and little bodies like that? And they got teeth because baby don't got no teeth. Babies don't got no teeth, you all. They don't. But they found these pygmies and they had teeth. They were observed to have teeth. The facts above stated are attested by Mr. Lane of White County who has seen the skeletons very often by his son, Jacob Lane, ex ESQ, of Sparta, in the same county, and by another son, Alexander, a student at law, who all say they can be verified by all the inhabitants in the vicinity of the farm, who, Mr. Lane, who is a man of observation, gives, at, gives it at his decided opinion that these are skeletons of adult persons. He founds his opinion upon the solidity 
of the bones of the heads and also upon the fact of the sutures of these skulls being entirely closed and solid. <sighs> Adult persons, you all. Did they say how big they were? Um, is what I'm thinking. The trees, okay, this, now we're going to talk about the trees, the vegetation. And my feet are getting hot, Michelle, honey. Your, your mama's got to take her shoes off. I do got to take my shoes off down here on this floor. Got to cook off my shoes, Michelle, honey, because your mama's getting hot. All right. The trees, you all, where they were found are of as great size and age as any in the surrounding forest. The small graves at Mr. Lane are arranged. That's right. We got this. Are there dragon socks? <laughs> I don't know. The small graves are arranged, but at Mr. Anderson's, there is a large burying ground full of them, you all. A large burial ground without any order as to position that the bones are human. Mr. Lane thinks there can be no doubt and that these and that they are not the bones of children. He thinks unquestionable. And the rocks, the rocks which enclose them are thin blue limestone and not of that neighborhood originally. All the limestone in the vicinity being of a gray color. Here is a mystery that baffles conjecture and puts all the experience at defiance. The stories of the pygmies of Herodotus on the borders of Ethiopia and the Red Sea and those of Homer in India have always been treated as fables, which in the days of those men entered into the most of their written compositions. Did you know that? So the pygmies of Herodotus, Herodotus, Herodotus and the borders of Ethiopia and the Red Seas and those of Homer in India spoke of the pygmies, you all, and they said they were all fiction, fictional, fictional beings. Um, as this day, we must outstrip credulity itself to belief in the real existment, existence of pygmy men. How could a nation of pygmy men not exceeding 18 inches in stature? Look at this. How could a nation of pygmy men not exceeding 18 inches in stature build habitations, clear the forest, cultivate the soil, defend themselves against the ravages of the hawk and eagle, the wolf and the panther, you all. 18 inches. So that's around a foot and a half, you all. A foot and a half. So just think about a ruler. Okay, about a ruler. You could probably say from your, from the bottom of your foot to your knees, um, that's how tall they were right there. The bottom of your foot to your knees, you all. Uh, would be how tall they are. Actually, you know, I could say that they would be, if this laptop were stretched completely out, it would be this long and this long right here. Now, that's almost two feet, you all. A foot and a half tall. That's the pygmies. Uh, and they, wanted, they want us to believe that the hobbits, the pygmies, how about the elves? You know, the elves and the shoemaker? Well, they were teeny tiny too, the elves and the shoemaker. Now, let's think about that. So, if the elves and the shoemaker, let's see how big the elves and the shoemakers were. Elves and shoemaker. I remember that. They had to be bigger than the shoe, so they couldn't be that big. I don't think they could be that big, because uh, surely they, they um, had to be a little bit bigger than that. Let's see how big the elves and the shoemaker are. Um, okay, let's look. So let's see. Okay, well, well, these are showing these ones to be about that big. Well, they, they, 
Well, that's bigger than 18 inches, maybe. Maybe you all. These are boots and these boots would certainly come almost up to the knee, you all. So these could be about the height of those elves. I mean, of those pygmies. It really could be with the elves and the shoemaker. And you know how the story goes. The shoemaker, he made clothes for the elves because they didn't have no, they didn't have no clothes. Um, gremlins. Uh, the gremlins. Are the gremlins really small, you all? Now, is that in Harry Potter, the gremlins? Let's, let's look at the gremlins, Michelle, honey. Gremlins. Um, let's see how big they look, you all, because, um, that wind is really blowing out. No, these are animals. These gremlins are animals, you all. They, they're not human, so it couldn't be these. Uh, yeah, they, they're not, they're not human bodies. Okay, they're not, they're not like little men. So we can't, we can't, they can't be a human. Uh, so anyhow, so there's these giants, the pygmy tribe. Uh, that's right, that's right. Um, so let's look at this, you all. So he got another one. Uh, we are talking about the giants, you all, I promise. We're going to get over to the giants, but they, there was a little article put at the beginning of the giants of Tennessee. If you're thinking, Gina, I thought you were talking about the giants. Well, we are. Um, the giant skeletons uh, found in Tennessee, as well as popularizing Tennis pygmies, John Hayward. So that's what we're looking at right now, these pygmies. Um, the place where Mr. Anderson formerly lived searched further. Um, so they opened up two small graves, the first 18 inches long, about 12 inches broad. It contained the little bones, pieces of part of one tooth, and other things contained in the package. Number three, the second grave was two feet long, one inch wide and 15 inches deep. It contained the bones, the teeth, the vessel and shells enclosed in package. Number three, this person was laid up on the right side with his head to the south and his face to the east. The body lay north and south and the thigh bones east and west. The legs were laid back so as to form an angle with the thighs of about 30 degrees all this could be clearly ascertained by a cautious and careful examination of the bones, which, although plainly to be seen, yet nevertheless were so decayed, decayed that they would crumble at the slightest touch. Nor could they lift the bones in any sunder because the condition then they would be presented to view in the package. The underside of the skull, as it was in the grave, was sounder and stronger than that which was uppermost. So these pygmies... That if you touch them, their, their bones would totally decay and like poof, they turn to dust. Uh, so these were, are they talking about the sockets of the eye and stuff like that, you all? This has a lot. Oh my, this is really interesting. A little round shell, you all. Look, a little round shell found in the grave. This grave was four feet from the one last mentioned. The little round shell found in this grave, two little holes, a cross, and mid Two circles cut in. It was not seen in any other grave that they had opened. That is to say, the cross and the circles were not. Three vessels were also in one grave, but all were broken so that they were not per worth preserving. Five feet from the grave, they opened up another one. You all, they found 14 inches, 22. They found the elbows 22 inches. The head was 14 inches broad. The foot was 10 inches. The sides and ends lined up with flag rock. And the manner of which the graves, it had only been 12 inches, lay a person 5 feet 5 inches high. Okay, so they got that, you all. So they got the arms, they got the legs. This was uh, around Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so you all, we're going we're gonna, to um, see this was an article. And you can see this, I think there's a YouTube video, you all. Right here, the ancient pygmy race. Oh, that's in South Dakota also? Oh, wow. Now, how can they have, I should have labeled this the pygmy race. How could they have pygmies in South Dakota? Isn't that funny? I mean, it's not funny, but um, look. Though many tried to debunk the idea of an ancient pygmy tribe in Tennessee, a topic that will be discussed in further blog posts, the belief remains strong until the late 19th and early 20th centuries, 
The New York Times ran a piece titled Tennessee Pygmies in 1876. Mastodons in a forest field with mastodons and all of that kind of stuff, you all. Well, look at this. Uh, they got the mound builders, the Aztec, the Chinese, the Egyptians, the Welsh, um, the lost tribes of Israel then triumphantly show the exact height capacity whiskey of the Kentucky Giants. Kentucky Giants. Kentucky had giants, you all. When the Kentucky Giants were discovered, it was natural that the state pride of the people of Tennessee should somewhat be hurt. Um, the Kentuckians insinuating, insinuating doubts as to the alleged character of these gigantic bones. So they had giant bones. Oh, my goodness. Oh, they promptly proceeded to find the rival bones of still greater merit. Their industry has been rewarded by the discovery of a graveyard containing the skeletons of 75,000 pygmies. Oh, my gosh. 75,000 pygmies of the average height of three feet each. What are the three eight tooth giants of Kentucky in comparison with so great a cloud of pygmies. 75,000 pygmies. The average height of three feet each, you all, in Tennessee. Okay. They said, if we may judge from the price usually paid by circus managers for living giants and dwarfs, a three-foot dwarf is decidedly more valuable than an eight-foot giant. Than an eight-foot giant. And it is the same standard that governs the price of fossils, you all. The 75,000 Tennessee pygmies are worth, look at this, um, 75,000 Tennessee pygmies are worth fully 25,000 times as much as three Kentucky giants. While the Kentuckians can present their giants to three eminent scientific men and thus obtain three distinct scientific reports certifying to the enormous interest and value of fossil giants, the Tennesseans can supply every scientific man in this country and in Europe with a fossil dwarf and so secure testimonials without number to the unequaled excellence of Tennessee pygmies. Oh my gosh, you all. This is a New York article, New York Times. Indeed, if the discoverers of the pygmies will only employ some astute piano maker who is an expert in testimonials to obtain for the fossil dwarfs the recognition of the scientific world, there is not a living scientific person who will not sign a certificate setting forth his admiration for the beauty and durability of the pygmies and his determination to use none of these of the celebrated Tennessee graveyard for the rest of his professional life, you all. Oh my gosh. Can you believe that? We go to talk about the giants in Tennessee, and we end up talking about the pygmies. 75,000. You was reading um, something thought-provoking. Oh my gosh. At what period these pygmies flourished, what they accomplished, and by what means they were induced to retire simultaneously to their graveyard? Somebody killed them. Somebody killed them all, you all. They did. A graveyard of them. See, that's what it says. At what period these pygmies flourished? Because they used to be all over the place. What they accomplished and by what means were they induced to retire simultaneously to their graveyard can only be conjectured. 
They may have been the identical pygmies that, according to the Greek legend, waged war with the cranes. If so, the cranes must have proved too powerful for them. Y'all, who were the cranes? I've never heard of the cranes. Okay, this is hardly probable, and any modern Tennessean who has attempted to keep chickens in the neighborhood of a family of citizens of African descent will scornfully refuse to believe that the pygmies of three feet height could not kill the cranes on their roost with at least as much success as achieved by the African small boy when invading midnight hen houses. We must wait for farther discoveries before it will be safe to decide whether the pygmies were contemporary with the giants and whether they preceded the mound builder. The bare fact that they once existed is all, is all that we can now safely affirm of them. But doubt, doubtless, by the time that every home in the country is ornamented by a fossil pygmy and every newspaper publishes extracts from the certificates of scientific persons who are overwhelmed with the admiration of vast superiority of the Tennessee to those of all rival communities, we shall be in possession of information which will enable us to know at least as much as the pygmies as we now know of the mastodon and the mound builders. What are those things between the elephant's toes? Okay, well, see, I never heard that before, you all. You saw a video of a glowing red bird, and they are hollow. So you all, come on. So this was article that was found. Let's see where it was found. Um, New York Times ran a piece. They ran it. The New York Times, Tennessee Pygmies, in March the 24th of 1876. So how can we have a race of beings? Now, could that have been the, could that have been the Hobbit-like people? Uh, we did the Serpent Mound uh, the other day on this YouTube channel. We did, as uh, what we did. It is, uh, wow. I'm going to have to go back and uh, put like the pygmies also, the giants and the pygmies of Tennessee in this uh, live stream right here because we read a lot about the pygmies. Look at this, you all. So, an ancient graveyard, a later find, additional discovery corroborated in the 1820s, su supposedly occurred in Coffee County, uh, Tennessee, the Grand at the Grange Advance, the Red Wing, Minnesota, reported the following on March the 29th. Minnesota, okay, let's see. An ancient graveyard of vast proportions has been found in Coffee County. It is similar to those found in White County and other places in Tennessee, but is vastly more extensive and shows that the race of pygmies who once inhabited this country were very numerous. When they say country, I think they mean the whole United States. You know, they probably was all over the world, according to Herodotus, according to, um, where was it at? All these other places. They were talking about around the world uh, that the pygmies were found and they just went hush hush with it. Uh, you remember that? I forget where all these other places they said they found them at. Um, and they said they were all myth. They were all myth, they said you all. And you know they're not myth. They're not. Um, I'm, I'm trying to finish reading the rest of this, you all. I am. I got myself distracted. So Homer's Iliad or something like that, you all. They, they, the peculiar, some peculiar, the same peculiarities of a position observed in White County graves are found in these. The writer of the letter says, some Considerable excitement and curiosity took place a few days since near Hillsboro, Coffee County, and James Brown's farm, a man was plowing in a field which had been cultivated many years, plowing up a man's skull and other bones. After making further examination, they found that there were about six acres in the graveyard. They were buried in a sitting or standing position. Their bones show that they were a dwarf race of people about three feet 
high. It is estimated that there were about 75,000 to 100,000 buried there you are. Oh my gosh. They say it was folklore. Folklore, make believe, and myth. The pygmies. Um, <gasps> hey, that's that book, Where the Wild Things Are. Do you know that was my favorite book when I was a little bitty girl in uh, elementary school? Where the Wild Things Are. And that boy, I, Max, he warred his terrible war, roar, and he, whatever, his terrible teeth, because he was complaining and, and he, to his mom, and he got to sent to bed without his supper, and then he went to where the wild things are, you all, the wild things, and they, they look kind of wild. They did. It was my favorite book, Max and the Wild Things. I think it was Max and where the wild things are. Wild. Why did they write a children's book about that? Why would they do that, you all? where the wild things are. See, there's Max. I still have that book right there, where the wild things are. Look at that. He was with them. Look at, he got mad because he got sent to bed without his supper. And he became the king of the wild things, you all. You see, he's a little boy too. He's around three feet probably. And that's about how tall they are. But I think they look kind of human, you all, um, is what I think happened. Look at that. He became their friend. Oh, well, he's riding on their backs now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my. And then they did a film on it. I never knew they did a film because these look a lot bigger. They look like monstrous beings. That's really awful, you all. That's right, you wrote it. So um, so we're talking about the pygmies too. The pygmies were all over the earth too. So giants roamed the earth, okay. Um, you know what it reminds me of? The battle of five armies on earth in the Lord of the Rings. Okay, you know the Lord of the Rings sequel? The battle of five armies. The battle of five armies. Oh, my nose is starting to itch you. Well, it really is. Uh, the five armies of the Hobbit. Okay, here's who they were. The goblins, the wolves, the elves, the men, and the dwarves. Why would they make a movie of these if they didn't exist. I, I don't believe in make believe like that, you I don't. I believe that these did exist and they're not make believe. There were goblins. There's wolves, uh, elves, men, and dwarves. But I don't see the reptilians in there, you all. I don't see the reptilians. Where are the reptilians in that uh, Hobbit movie um, is what I'm thinking. Where the red fern grows, a tiny uh, slip. Thirty mile, You live 30 miles from Coffee County, and you're going to do more research on this subject, Blue Sky. That's wonderful. Where is, where is Coffee County at? Is that in Tennessee, or is that um, somewhere else? Because I've already forgot uh, what I was reading. Um, yeah. Alice in Wonderland falls on the map upside down. The wolves, um, I have heard of the gremlins. I have, um, do they have hairy feet? I, they didn't say it. Um, they didn't. Um, it, it, oh, Tullahoma is the largest city in Coffee County. Okay, I've got gotcha. you. So the pygmies, you all, did you ever hear about the pygmies? Well, I cannot, I cannot believe that we have went so far and we didn't hear nothing about the pygmies in um, history. Um, I wonder what they look like. I really do. Um, well, I'm, I'm not too interested in the, the gim gimlins. Sammy Star, that's wonderful. Okay, so let's look at this, you all. 
so this John Hayward, in his work, The Natural Aboriginal History of Tennessee, he docu documented several unique discoveries, and these include the giant skeletons found in Tennessee, particularly in and around White County. So White County, I don't know where that's at, you I don't. Um, if you're just tuning in, I'm, I'm not at my original computer because I am in Tennessee. My husband said, guess where we're going? We're going to Tennessee, and I'm in the middle of the woods. Uh, so I, I did bring my laptop and my cell phone, and I've got internet connection. Otherwise, I'd be using my big computer at home and doing the screen share with the OBS studio. So I do apologize. I have to do this with my cell phone and use my phone to do this. But that's okay, you all. It is. I wanted to do a video, and this works perfect. It does. That's all right. Uh, Mammoth Cave. I don't know about the Mammoth Cave. I really don't. Um, I used to like caves, but I don't like them anymore. I really don't. Did you all used to like caves and you don't like them anymore? And the reason I don't like them anymore is because they're all kind of the same. And there's kind of, as I got older, I thought I feel so closed in. And I don't know what's in those dark clay caves anymore. I don't. Probably could be some reptilians and stuff in there, you all. That's right. Um... Why were we lied to about history? Like, um, like really, who gave them the right? That's right. Who gave them the right? Bigfoot is a gremlin. That's interesting. That is interesting. Caves, yeah, they do. Um, reptilian. Okay, you all. So look at this. So we got this. Uh, and there, he's talking about um, the giants of White County. This is ascertained by the length and dimensions, dimensions of skeletons which are found in East and West Tennessee. These will prove demonstratively that the ancient inhabitants of this country, either the primitive or the secondary settlers, were of gigantic stature compared with the present race of Indians. On the farm, Mr. John Miller of White County are a number of small graves, also many large ones, and the bones in which show that the bodies to which they belong to, when alive, must have been seven feet high and upwards. About the year 1814, Mr. Lawrence found in Scarborough's Cave, oh wow, which is on Calf Killer River, a branch of the Caney Fork about 12 or 15 miles from Sparta, in a little room in the cave, many human bones of a monstrous size. He took the jawbone. He took the jawbone and he applied it to his own face. And when his chin touched the concave of the chin bone, the hind, the hinder ends or hinder ends of the jawbone did not touch the skin of his face on either side. He took a thigh bone and applied it to the upper end of his own hip joint and the lower end reached four inches below the knee joint. Mr. Andrew Bryan saw a grave opened about four miles northwardly from Sparta on the calf, calf, calf killer fork and he took a thigh bone. Okay, we did that. Uh, Sparta, what are we talking about, you all? I kind of lost my thing. Thigh bone, he applied it to the knee bone, to the extreme length of his own, and the upper bone passed behind him as far as the full width of his body, you all. Okay, so yeah, we got it. Cat, cat, calf killer fork. He took the thigh bone, raising it up to his knees, and applied the knee joint to the bone at the extreme length of his own knee, and the upper end of the bone, which passed out behind him as far as the full width of his body. Mr. Lawrence is about 5 feet 10 inches high. And Mr. Bryan is about 5 feet 9 inches. Mr. Sharp Whitley, or Whitley was in a cave near the place. And when Mr. Bryan saw the graves open, in it were many of these bones. The skulls lie plentifully in it. And all the other bones of the human body, all in proportion and of monstrous size, human bones were taken out of a mound on Tennessee River below Kingston, which Mr. Brown saw measured by Mr. Sims. The thigh bones of those skeletons 
when applied to Mr. Sims' thigh, were an inch and a half longer than his from the point of his hip to his knee, supposing the whole frame to have been the same proportion, and the body belonged to it must have been at least seven feet upward. And many bones, you are, we're talking about these giants in Tennessee. Many of the bones in the mounds there are of equal size. They say, suppose a man seven or eight feet high. That is 18 inches and two feet taller than the men of common size. Suppose the body is broader than the same proportion. Also the arms and the legs. Would he not be entitled to be named a giant? You are that look, you know what that sounds like. It sounds like the Adena race. It does. Because they were built. They had big, thick arms, bodies, mm, their faces were all muscular, except they had the, the elongated skull, but they were built muscularly. If this is what it sounds like, you are, and if you hadn't watched the Giants of, um, what was it, West Virginia, uh, in that video, uh, someone drew an artist thing based on all the evidence and documentation of what these Giants of Adena look like, and they had the great big uh, forehead, and they were powerfully muscular in stature. They were all of that. Yes, we like muscles, we do. Um, so the body must have been up to seven feet high. Um, and the jaw bones. Uh, so let's see, Con Colonel Joe Lewis, two miles from Nashville, the jaw bones of a man which easily covered the whole chin, uh, a man of large size. Some years afterward, Mr. Cassidy dug up a skeleton from under a small mound near the large one at Bledsoe's Lick in Sumer County, which measured little short of seven feet in length. Human bones have been dug up at the plantation where Judge Overton now lives in Davidson County, four miles southwesterly from Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, making a cellar. These bones were of extraordinary size. The underjaw of the bone of one skeleton very easily slipped over the jaw of Mr. Childress, a stout man, full-fleshed, very robust, and considerably over the common size. These bones were dug up with the traces of ancient walls in the form of a square of two or three hundred yards in length situated near an excellent, never-failing spring of pure and well-tasted water. The spring was enclosed within the walls, and the great number of skeletons was found within the enclosure, a few feet below the surface of the earth. On the outer side were traces of an old ditch and rampart thrown up on the inside. Some small mounds were also within the enclosure, you all. They've got them all over the place. Um, there's some, uh, let's see, in the county of Giles, 11 and a half miles north of Pulaski, on the east side of the creek is a cave with several rooms, the first 45 feet wide, 27 foot long, 4 feet deep, a solid rock, uh, it was artfully covered, uh, that it escaped the detection until lately, a flat stone, and inside there, you all, there was, um, the arm and jawbone of a child, a man, skulls and thigh bones of the caves. You think somebody ate them and left their bones? fee fi fo fum You think they ate other beings like that? Oh, a conical mound uh, in Sparta, White County. A conical mound. We talked about the conical mounds uh, also in, uh, was it, um, well, they were talking about conical mounds in Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, Ohio, conical mounds. Uh, they were like, that's what they look like. Oh my goodness gracious, you are. So there are, there were pygmies, dwarfs. Uh, they were all around the earth, roaming the earth. Um, there were giants roaming the earth also. Um, what other things were roaming the earth that we haven't heard about, you all? Really, what other things? Um, they had the ancient Scythians and their tribes. Um, the, the course of 2,000 years has reduced the size of an ancient Scythian and their tribes. The Gauls and the Germans, the Samaritans, 
Sarmatians uh, have produced the same effects in here. The descendants of these giants, both in Ode and the New World, agree with each other in bulk as their ancestors did with each other, which prove a uniform cause operating equally both in the Ode and the New World, you all. The Ode and the New World. The giants of Hebron and Gath, those of Laconia and Italy, whose skeletons to this day attest that they that there they formerly dwelt compared with those found in West Tennessee demonstrate that a change of climate or of some other cause has worked a remarkable change in the human system with respect to the mammoth and megalonyps and other animals. It uh, extinguished or driven them into other far distant latitude. Nature as it grows in age is less vigorous than at the beginning and in its early age, it was its productions correspond with its debility. At the time must come when she, like all productions, will give up the ghost and work no more. Um, so look at that, you all. Skeletons. We have um, Asia Minor. So we have Aborigines of America. We have um, mounds in the Hinduic Grecian, belonging to the ancient countries of Asia Minor, probably belong to the Aborigines of America, properly so called, to cover the entire body uh, is Scythic. To bury in graves or in boxes is Ethiopic, Egyptian, and in part Hebraic. The Hebrews have learned it during their residence in Egypt, you are. So they bury them in mounds. Um, uh, look, when they bury mounds over their entire bodies are Skythic, the graves and boxes he break, and the boxes and the mounds he break, and Skythic, Scythic, and of course the unconsumed skeletons we see here are either pure Scythians or Hebrew Scythians, while all others are Hittinoic, or other words, Aboriginal, you all. Large men of the world have always been found in the north, and they have often invaded and broken up in people of the south. They have never been found in the South, nor have the people of the South ever broken up their settlements there and marched upon those in the North to expel them from their possessions to make room for themselves. The men who deposited the skeletons were, are now contemplating, were of Northern Grope, and they came to the South to drive away the inhabitants whom they found here and to seat themselves in their position. So you also, that's what happened. So the men who um, deposited the skeletons we are now contemplating were of northern growth and they came to the south to drive away the inhabitants whom they found there and to seat themselves in their possession. So, the, so would we have the king of the north and the kings of the south, the king of the north and the king of the south. Hmm. So they said they wouldn't have went there, but they did, you all. Kings of the North, Kings of the South, Men of the North, Men of the South. It came and did whatever with a fury. So, yeah, you all. So, this was the giants. And then we also talked about the pygmies. The pygmies were found in graves, 75,000 bodies and some 100,000 bodies of pygmies. And some were 18 inches and some were like three feet. And they were not uh, babies. They were adult uh, beings with teeth and arms and legs. You are, they look like little humans, little men and stuff like that. The pygmies of old, and I've never heard anything in my life about them at all, and you probably haven't either. But there, there's something going on. There really is. Something's going on in the history of the world, and I, I think um, the reason this stuff is out there is I think they probably want to let you read about it. Otherwise, if listen, if they don't want you reading what's out there. If they don't want you reading about the giants of ancient Tennessee and the the pygmies right here, the pygmy tribes in ancient Tennessee, then it wouldn't be on the internet because you know what? They would wash the internet. So look at this. Um, what is this, you all? The what? Who are the Alagui? Alagui. What is that, you all? 
Amerigo Vespucci and the Island of Giants. When Hawaii was peopled by giants. The DeSoto Expedition. Let's see what they're saying, you all. Evil giants drowned in mud. Seven-foot skeleton in South Dakota. Giant skeletons in Frederick County, Maryland. Cliff-dwelling giants. Enormous skull discovered. The Coninat Giants. Giant footprints, a Chickawa tracks in old the George Washington Giant Skellingtons. Prehistoric cemetery bones of a giant race. Um, copper clad Ohio Giant. Copper, copper crown Pennsylvania Giant. Oops, shoot. I clicked into it, you all. So they have a copper crowned Pennsylvania giant. So if it's crowned, it's probably a king or something like that. A large Indian mound near the towns of Gates, Getterville, Pennsylvania, you all. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Um, I'm going to push this back, you all. I am. I'm not going to get too far into that stuff right there because there's lots of stuff about giants. So we did the, look, Gog and Magog and Gog and Magog. Well, who are Gog and Magog? Because it was talking about the Gog and the Magog, too. I'm going to be hopping off of here, you all. I just wanted to get on here. And again, I'm not at home. I'm in Tennessee in the middle of the woods somewhere. Um, and I'm doing this on my cell phone and my laptop. And it's, yeah, it's really exciting. It is. And um, I look forward to doing some more, you all. When I end this video, I will log on to my YouTube account on my laptop. And I will put down the references of all these links right here that I have open so you can go see them. All these links right here that I have open on here. I will put the references down in the description of this video so you all can see them too. Um, because it's really interesting. I did not know about those pygmies. And it's kind of sad, really, if you think about it. 75,000 and um, 100,000. They're just, they're just in mass graves. They just it, Somebody did something to them. Yeah. Kind of sad, yeah. Oh, yes, in New Zealand, you all. Oh, you're so very welcome. I am going to go, you all. Thank you for being on here. Thank you, moderators. Thank you all for your comments. Um, so with that being said, hello, wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello. From my heart to yours, love you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, you all. I don't know what time it is there. Is it around 11 o'clock where you're at? And my laptop says it's 10.05. I think they're on a different time here in Tennessee. Um, yeah. Um, tomorrow chat will be good, Michelle, honey. Yes. Um, that's right. Oh, you're so very welcome. Good night, everyone. Have a um, wonderful evening. 7.05 Pacific. I don't know what time it is. That's all right, you all. We're going to go. Have a, a wonderful uh, evening, you all. Oh, it's 12.05 p.m. in Guam, KJ, honey. Yes, Australia, 4.05, you all, 10.05, 8.05 in Albuquerque, 9.05 here. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Jay Joslin. Um, thank you, Apple Brooks, honey. Thank you, Susan B., Oh, 10.05 in Knoxville. Okay, Dennis, honey, thank you. Um, I am. I, I'm enjoying it. I mean, it looks kind of like where I'm at anyhow, at home. <laughs> it does. But that's okay, you all. It's a little road trip, just a little road trip. Yeah, 3.05 in Scotland. Good night, everyone. Love you.